Alright, good. Alright, so we're going to talk about proteins. So, I started um, my practice in 1997, and my idea was to go um, to be a, a nutrition focused chiropractor. And in 1998, that's when I started hardcore into nutrition. And I, in the chiropractic field, there's a lot of nutrition seminars, and I learned about ketosis back then, and low carb. And I was taught at the time that less than 70 gram, less than 75 grams of carbohydrates is low carb. And then there's the Dr. Atkins book, and he says uh, um, something almost similar, but he also said some people need to go all the way down below 20 grams of carbohydrates to get into ketosis and then they come back up, out, maybe to 50 or 60 and they can maintain at that level. All right, but um, that information sort of fell by the wayside. Dr. Atkins had died. He was attacked by a bunch of vegans and all the whole medical establishment and all the doctors and nutritionists. And um, there's a few people that have been maintaining that information. Um, and so, I started learning more about ketosis from a different source about three, actually it was two years ago, and that was the Charlie Foundation. So, the question here is how much protein? Well, there's the Charlie Foundation and PerfectKeto.com and DietDoctor.com, and they all say um, that uh, protein can prevent ketosis, and I said that for a couple of years, and it's not a true statement, and I'll show you a slide to prove that that's not a true statement. So, um, the term they use is moderate protein. This is a term I use for the last two years also. High fat, moderate protein, low carb. And then, okay. Um, and it does work. You get in ketosis this way with high fat, moderate protein, low carb. And we've had reverse, we've seen people reverse their diabetes, heart disease, and 11 cancers, uh, cancer cases. And you do get into ketosis. Now, in the last two years, I've had a few people do this diet, and the way that I describe it from the Charlie Foundation, which is a, for all, um, all, what am I, uh, seizures, and they got their information originally from the Mayo Clinic back in the 20s, but they say it's a one-to-one -one or a two-to-one ratio of fat versus protein plus carb. So the fat is, is high, and you can go up to four-to-one, four-to-one here for true therapeutic ketosis, and basically your fuel is the fat and the protein and carbs are very low. And this gets people into ketosis, but I've had a few people say, well, after like six months they stopped it, or after a year they stopped it, they couldn't sustain it, it wasn't sustainable. And the reason why is because the protein was too low, that's the main reason. All right, so if you wanna lose 150 pounds or you wanna do long-term cardiac rehabilitation, uh, heart disease prevention, reversing diabetes that you've had for 20 years. You gotta, be, you gotta do something that's sustainable. Um, now you can do this you know, on and off, I, and I te teach people to cycle in and out of ketosis using this equation. But to make it more sustainable and to be able to do it every day, we can't think that moderate protein is the way to go. We have to do um, higher amounts of protein. So I've been doing this on myself. Um, so, <clears throat> now there's a guy named Brian Sanders, he's creating a movie on uh, Food Lies, and he's got a um, podcast called Peak Human, and he's got really good um, information, and he said he, he created a unified food theory, like in physics there's a unified theory, in food there's a unified theory, and what this is, is that you have the first bullet point, you have protein, minerals, and vitamins. Those are the things that make up the structure of your body. So you don't want to skimp on any of those. And you have carbohydrates and fat, those are your fuels. And you pick one. You can't pick both at the same time. And I've been saying this for the last three years. If you have sugar and fat at the same time, the sugar destroys the fat and turns the fat into a cluster bomb of, destru of destruction. Okay, you can't blame the fat, you gotta blame the sugar. Okay, so you got the protein is at a good high dose that maintains the structure of your body, and then you pick carbs or you pick fat, okay? My recommendation is you lower the carbs and you choose your fat as the fuel. 
is that way you get into ketosis and all the tremendous benefits you get from ketosis. Okay, so if you lower your carbs below 20 grams per day, which is basically hardly anything, no fruit, vegetables, grains, um, you, after a few days or a week or whatever it takes, your body will get into ketosis. All right, so boom, now you're in ketosis, good. Now, if you wanna lose weight, you have to reduce the fat intake also. Now, both fuels are low, okay? And the protein is high, and you're, you're burning the fat that you're carrying around. Okay, now if you're an endurance athlete, the carbs are low, and the fat is high, and you're burning the fat that you're consuming. Okay, and you're in ketosis, and you're running a marathon, you're burning this fat. Okay, then after the marathon, you keep the fat up to rebuild your reserves. Okay, so there you go. Protein is up, carbs are low, and then the fat goes up and down depending on your needs. That's the simplicity of it. Okay. Um, now, the, it says the last bullet point, keep the protein high up to 125 to 200 grams because it doesn't affect ketosis. And there are studies that show they had, you know, dozens or hundreds of people in ketosis, and they're... Protein intake was 125, 150, 160, 180, and one was even over 200 grams of protein, and they're still in ketosis, and I have a slide to show you more about that. Okay, here's a woman, L. Amber O'Hearn, and um, she's got a carnivore conference coming up in March in, um, the, um, in Denver. I'm going to it. It says, eat meat. She says this, eat meat. Not too little, mostly fat. She created that statement to counter what Michael Pollan said. He's an author. He said, eat food, not too much, mostly plants. <laughs> okay. So if you eat meat, not too little, mostly fat, that's satisfaction. Satiety is key. Satiety makes intermittent fasting easier, ketosis easier, results easier. It's all more fun. Right? So don't be skimping on the fat or protein, right? Initially get in ketosis, um, don't be afraid of meat. Okay, this is my personal experiment. So I started about four and a half months ago. I was eating red meat twice a week and I increased it to one serving minimum per day, every day. Sometimes two, sometimes three servings a day. So I was eating red meat every day still to this day now, four plus months later, and uh, reducing my vegetable intake. And I've had no carbs to speak of as far as <coughs> grains and sugar for 19 years now, all right? And then I used to like fruit. I used to have fruit on a regular basis. I quit that about three years ago um, when I had black mold poisoning and I couldn't figure out why I was suffering. I had, didn't know about the black mold, so I cut out the fruit completely then. All right, so I'm re I reduced my vegetables, and um, one week one week ago, Wednesday last week, I had 198 grams of protein in that one day. I had 130 grams of fat and only seven grams of carbs, and that's almost 2,000, maybe a little bit more than 2,000 calories. Okay, here's what I ate. I had two rib steaks for breakfast. The lunch was a good fat bar. That's one of my companies. It's all fat. <clears throat> Dinner was seven eggs scrambled in bacon grease and cheese. And I was very happy all day. I mean, I didn't even hardly need that good fat bar at lunchtime because you eat two steaks for breakfast. You know, you should be able to go 10 hours, 12 hours, or even more, 18 hours. But I had that one good fat bar. Okay, so that was my food for the day. How many and eggs? How many seven eggs. eggs scrambled in bacon grease. So after the eggs, I tested my blood, my ketones were 1.3, my glucose was 95, and my GKI was four, meaning I was in moderate therapeutic, uh, moderate nutritional ketosis. And that was after dinner, that was like a half hour after I ate. So I was in ketosis all day from eating enormous amounts of protein, okay? So I, I've done this several times. Right, I've replicated this over so probably now six days I've done this sort of thing. Now um, I had on Sunday, um, I got another company, uh, Heritage Glandulars, and my business partner flew up from Florida. Sunday we had steaks for breakfast, and I had a T-bone steak. And then 
all, we did good all day. And then about 4.30, I was hungry. And then at 5.30, I was hungry. And at 6 o'clock, and I, my hunger was climbing up. And it wasn't hangry. It wasn't blood sugar crashing. It was ketosis. And I was realizing over the course of two and a half hours, I'm hungry. But we kept working. We're making some videos and stuff. And I was thinking, okay, I could eat. But an hour later, I'm still like not punching anybody in the face or running to the refrigerator. Okay, because I had a T-bone steak for breakfast. So then I had dinner, we had a restaurant, I had a, a steak and I had some greens with it. And I didn't test my numbers at, on that day, but the point here is that was Sunday. And it tells you the difference between being hangry and being hungry. If you're eating sugar and noodles and bread, in the standard American diet, you'll be angry and hungry at the same time, and you don't like people. And people don't like you. And things tend to break. And you get your car stuck in the snow when you're hangry. <laughs> and you slide off into the ditch. Okay. So here's a couple of uh, patients that I've instructed on how to do this diet. This guy's in high school, and I told him, Here's the, here's the instructions. Just eat meat. That's what I told him. That's all I said. And I had to give him some encouragement, and especially his mom. And she's like, well, we don't have any energy bars anymore, but we've been giving him stacks of bacon. I was like, that's a great marketing idea. You just <laughs> take five things of bacon and wrap them up and sell them as stack old bacon or something. So anyways, he's down 48 pounds in three months. And he works out every day at the gym, and he's still, you know, killing it in the gym, strong. And so here, this is a good example of, uh, this is a guy that, he, I, he and his wife have been patients for a long time. And she, they retired, and they moved, mo they spent most of the time in Arizona, they still have family in Michigan. So they were here a few weeks ago. And um, he could probably lose about 50 pounds. And he's eating meat and vegetables and hardly any fruit, no grains, no junk food, no pop. And if you're eating just meat and vegetables, how come he's not losing weight? And so his wife was talking about how she sautés the vegetables together and they eat salad and they have some protein, they have some meat. And I'm like, the salad and the sautéed vegetables are preventing weight loss. It's too high in carbs. I said, I told him, and I'm, I'm very comfortable saying this because I've known him for eight years or whatever, I said, you gotta go carnivore. Stop the plants. Stop all the plants. And uh, he did, his smile just went like this. <laughs> and the wife was like, kind of like, oh, gee, you know, trying to like sort out how do you do that. And um, he just is thrilled with that. But he'll lose 50 pounds, right? That, that's how that works. And it's just that easy. Okay, so his vegetable intake were probably more than 75 grams a day, preventing weight loss. And he could go down to less than 20. Like the seven grams of carbohydrates I had on that day last week was probably from the cheese. And there are there is some sugar in meat. It's called glycogen, right? So there's no such thing as a zero carb diet, right? But um, this is what our ancestors used to do. So my ancestors are from England, Germany area. And if you go back 500 years, 1,000 years, what did they eat from October until May? They had meat, that's all they had. They didn't pick berries because they didn't exist. They didn't harvest lettuce and pull carrots out of the ground. Not in the winter time. So it's totally fine to eat meat and nothing but meat for months on end. And there are people who eat nothing but meat that I follow on Twitter for five years, six years, 10 years. One guy, 22 years of nothing but meat. And they have various reasons why. For example, autoimmune condition, uh, skin problems, and there was a guy who was um, roading for the Grateful Dead, 52 years of nothing but meat. And he died in a car accident a few years ago. Okay, so here's this showing um, how protein does not affect ketosis. I did a video about this already on my YouTube channel. So here we have, I'm gonna kinda, I guess I'm gonna stand up to this side. Um, these are studies, here's one study, and it's the same study here and the same study here. And what this is showing here is ketosis. These people were in high, in, um, had a, a level of 4.0 
beta hydroxybutyrate. So they had a decent level of ketones in their body. And these people had a lower amount of ketones, but it was still existed, like 0.5 ketones. Okay, so here's the carb intake, and here's the protein intake. And as you can see, the carb intake was directly related to the amount of ketones in their, in their body. So high carb equals low ketones. Low carb equals high ketones. Low carb equals high ketones. High carb equals low ketones. So that's the pattern. Now here's the protein intake. It's the same studies, you know, going up and down. Mm -hmm. Same studies. Here we have the protein intake continually increasing. That's how they arrange these studies for this particular graph. And the amount of protein has no effect whatsoever on the um, ketones in the, in the body. Because you would expect this to go down or something like that. All right? So protein does not affect ketosis. All right, now this is guy, Dr. Ted Naiman. I got sucked into Twitter in June of last year. Um, and it's actually has been, it's a cesspool of hate and discontent. And it's also very educational. All right, so you gotta learn how to use the block button. Okay, so he's a medical doctor, he's been in practice as long as I have been, 20 years. And he started doing low carb, back when I started doing low carb, and he said that he was nervous and he didn't talk much about what he was doing with his patients. He was in a practice with other medical doctors and he wasn't telling them, hey, I'm t telling people to eat meat and eat fat and to lower their carbs because they might have kicked him out. But in the last few years, he's more confident and he's giving presentations on, um, at various uh, seminars and his videos on YouTube and his Twitter account. So, he, what he's saying here is basically what I was saying, like Dr. What, what Brian Sanders was saying about the unified theory of food. Protein is essential, it maintains the structure of your body. Then you got two fuels, that's fat and that's carb. So the protein is the most essential nutrient. The word protein actually means of first importance in ancient Greek or whatever. Whole food fat is an essential nutrient too. Carbohydrates are not essential. The word essential means it has to be in your diet. That's the definition in the nutrition world, what essential means. So you gotta get, you gotta get the protein from your diet. You gotta get the fat from your diet. Carbohydrates, there's no such thing as an essential carbohydrate. Carbohydrates exist only to provide energy. And am I blocking your way? Is this blocking your way? Can you see the whole screen? All right, and then added fat only provides extra energy. Okay, so added fat. What does that mean? Let's say you're doing, um, added fat would be oils on the salad, it would be butter on the steak, it would be a good fat bar for extra energy. Now you can do, you can add, have the extra fat initially to get in ketosis and that'll help you. And then once you're there, you know, like here's your carbs are down, you might get hungry because the carbs are down, have the fat go up, right? Just to help the satiety. Right? Then you get in ketosis, then lower the fat or keep the fat up, whatever you need to do. Okay. But that's a different category of food, is added fat versus whole food fat as an essential nutrient. So what we're taking here is this nutrient number versus the energy number. It's a ratio. I'm going to show you some graphs here in a second. So it's a ratio, and it's um, the PDE <coughs> ratio. What? Not, no, not yet. All right, now this data, this, these are all graphics that Ted Naiman made. So I'm giving full um, disclosure. I did not make these, I'm stealing them from Ted Naiman. And these graphs make me look super smart. <laughs> so the standard American diet is 100 grams of protein. It's 100 grams of fat and 300 grams of carbohydrates. That's the way it is, that's the way it's been since 1980 when the USDA told us to eat this way we're doing exactly what they told us to do. And they told the food manufacturers to make their food to look like this, and the military, and the, all the institutions, the government, you know. So the new diet should be higher protein. Okay, this is very rounded up. 200 is very rounded up, maybe the exact numbers later. 200 grams of protein, 100 grams of fat stay the same, and the carbohydrates go from 300 down to 100. 
So that, that 75 to 100 grams of carbohydrates is a low carbohydrate, um, but without any weight loss. And in order, in order to lose weight, you gotta get to 50 or definitely below 20. Okay, so that's low carbohydrate with weight loss. Okay. You guys with me? Mm -hmm. All right, good. All right, so here's getting back to the name of the PE ratio. Um, right here, PE ratio. So we got. Um, how much energy did you have to eat to get to that protein? So in this case, we had a 10% protein, 90% energy to get in to get this protein. And then this, when you do the math, is this arrow on this graph right here. This is a loaf of bread. This is milk with all the sugar that milk has. Cheese, eggs, uh, beef, chicken, fish. Okay, now um, I'll get into more detail here in a second. Okay, so it's a protein to energy ratio, PE ratio. The energy is the carbohydrates minus the fiber plus the fat. So here we have, if you want to gain weight, you combine oil and flour, oil and sugar. That's all the junk food, all the convenient food. It's all bad oils and super refined sugar and flour. All right, a little step better, but still for fat gain is all potatoes, whole grains and nuts, milk, peanuts, beans are here, and you can see the ratio is one to five, two to five, then it's two to three, here it's one to one. One to one right here is sort of the boundary between fat loss and fat gain. All right, here we have ribeye steak, eggs, um, and then here we have leaner cuts of, of, of uh, meat. So lower fat fish and higher protein. Okay, so that gives you an idea. So let's evaluate some food specifically. Not quite yet. So, tar so here's how you get your, your target protein grams per day. So let's say you, you want to lose weight and you want to achieve the weight of 160 pounds. So your target protein per day would be one gram per daily per pound of desired body weight. All right, so if you're 200 pounds, you want to get to 160, you get your grams of protein to 160. If you're 300 pounds and you want to weigh 160, you get your grams of protein to 160. All right, limit carbs. Unlimited fiber from green vegetables, but limit net carbs to less than about 50 grams a day. And it, it all depends on if you get into ketosis or not. So 50, 40, 30, 20 grams of carbs per day. So balance the fat. This is what I mentioned before at the very beginning. If you have too much fat in your body, skip high fat foods and eat only fats from eggs and lean meat. So skipping high fat foods means stop the bulletproof coffee. Stop the fat bombs. Stop the extra added butter on your steak. Okay, it, this is all determined with, with blood tests like the keto, or, uh, keto mojo or urine tests like the keto stick. And then the weight, and then you look at your scale and you see what happens based on what you ate. All right, so balance fat. I'm gonna say it again, if you have too much fat in your body, skip high fat foods and eat only Fats from eggs and lean meat. So eggs and lean meat, that would be your sources of fat. Lean meat doesn't have any fat. It's got some. It's low in fat. All right, so now Ted um, figured out the PE ratio of different diets. Here's the standard American diet. So fat gain, it's in the fat gain area, this pinkish area. And the worldwide hunter-gatherer average is between maintenance and fat loss. So, good? Does that make sense? Okay, now right here it says <clears throat> standard American diet again. And then this is called Eat Lancet. So I don't, raise your hand if you've heard about Eat Lancet. It was about a few weeks ago when Lancet came out with their recommendation on um, what we should be eating. And this was partially funded by the people that make the Impossible Burger. 
which is a fake pea protein, fake burger. Okay, so they're directing. It's 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 so evil. <laughs> it's so evil. The these billionaires that funded the Impossible Burger, they have their own private jet and they travel wherever they want to go. And they're telling you to stop eating meat because of global warming. Okay, they should just crash their jet and take a horse. <laughs> okay. So yeah, the Eat Lancet is no different than the standard American diet. And their meat, um, allowed meat intake is like this much. One quarter of an egg per day, per person. That's stupid. It's just insane. Okay. All right, and then not much different than the my plate recommendation from the USDA. So you see where the standard uh, thought lies is uh, weight gain. <clears throat> okay, let's pick some individual foods. These are apples. Let's do the math. So the protein is very low, 0.2 grams. There's 0.2. This is how you can look at a label. You can figure out food for yourself. You take the carbohydrates and you subtract the fiber. So 15 minus 3 is 12, 12.3 here. And so you add up that, uh, I'm sorry, 12 net carbs and then 0.3 fat. So the energy is 12.3 grams and the protein is 0.2. So the protein to energy ratio is 0 0.02. So apples are right here. Apples are weight gain right here. Okay. <clears throat> this is meat. You can see it's like ground meat right there. So the protein is 21 grams, and the uh, fat is 10, and there's no carbs. So the protein to energy ratio is 2.1. So that's that right there. So that's weight loss right there. Eating meat causes weight loss. Now historically, I don't know if I've said, I think I may have said this before in a video, but Atkins did not create the Atkins diet. He took the uh, protein sparing modified fast diet from Indiana University in 1965 and he put his name on it. And that diet came from previous authors going all the way back to the late 1800s. So there's books about, hey, just eat meat and you'll get healthy. All right, and nobody, by the way, has ever died from eating meat unless it was E. coli or something. Meat doesn't kill anybody, it never did. It's always been the sugar, the flour. Okay. Um, so yeah, so meat is there. Let's pick another food. These are oats. So the protein is at seven grams, right there. And the fat is at three. The carbohydrate is 29, subtract the fiber that's 24. So the energy is 27. So you just look at the math like this on the label. And, um, do the division and it's 0.26. So yeah, oats cause weight gain because diabetes, diabetes causes heart disease. And I just have to say, I said this in a video last night that diabetes causes heart disease. It's not cholesterol. But what is diabetes? It's high insulin. Diabetes is not high blood sugar because you can have high insulin for 20 years and your blood sugar is normal. You've had diabetes for 20 years. Okay, so, and not many doctors um, check, check the insulin. Once you have high blood sugar, you've had diabetes for 30 years. Okay, so all of these are um, grains, oats, millet, spelt, barley, quinoa, brown rice. They're all weight gains, pro-diabetes, pro-heart disease, pro-cancer, pro-lactic acidosis, which is the mechanism of chronic disease. This is an egg. Six grams of protein, five grams of fat, no carbs, six to five ratio, 1.2. There's the egg right there. All right, these are Pop Tarts. <laughs> Do you need me to go over this one? Okay, does protein harm kidneys? No. So I put this up because. <clears throat> Um, it's a frequent discussion and a long time ago I used to belong to the online rounds 
of Albert Einstein Medical College, the School of Medicine. So I, I was involved in their education, their online rounds, and they had one of their online rounds was about kidney and protein. And even at end stage renal disease, there's no research that shows that protein causes harm to the kidneys. All right, now there's, several, there's a couple of people on Twitter that I follow, and they just keep posting over and over again, here's a study that shows that protein doesn't harm kidneys. Here's another one, here's another one, here's another one. Like when is it gonna be over that we, when do we stop saying that protein harms the kidneys? Like there's no science to back that up. Even with end stage renal disease. All right, um, here's quality. So that's all about the quantities of, of, uh, of um, protein. Um, now, on social media, I've seen people talk about curing their gout by eating the carnivore diet. Just nothing but meat, getting rid of their gout. I've seen people, um, there's a website called meatheals.com where people can put on the website their success story, eating a carnivore diet. And people are saying their autoimmune conditions are going away. And I see this as more powerful, like just a carnivore diet is more powerful for reversing autoimmune conditions than the classical ketogenic diet that I was promoting where people are eating whipped cream, heavy, you know, heavy whipping cream, and olives and cheese, and they're keeping their protein moderate. The autoimmune conditions go away better and more completely by just eating carnivore. It's pretty amazing. All right, not to mention, the strengthening of the immune system and making the immune system smarter. Okay. Um, I just have a couple more slides about quality of proteins. Any questions on this right now where we're at with, with quantities? Okay. All right, moving on then. So quality of protein. Liver and red meat are the highest quality of protein on the planet due to myoglobin, heme iron, minerals, fat-soluble vitamins, I forgot to put that on there. A, B, E, and K, <clears throat> which brings up um, another success with um, quality. Um, there's a, a guy on Twitter named Tucker, I forgot his last name, Goodrich, Tucker Goodrich, and he cut out all the vegetable oils that are now known as seed oils. So canola, mazola, peanut oil, he cut all those out. And his wife is from Colombia. She's got dark skin. He's white. They spent a day outside, and he did not burn for the first time in his life. And she burned, and she was still eating the seed oils. So when you have artificial bad fats and oils that are man-made, highly processed, they your your body fries in the sun. Now I have not experimented with this. If anybody's going to experiment, that would be me, mm -hmm. right? So I've been very diligent about avoiding. Um, these seed oils. So, back to this. So liver is even way more healthier than red meat. And I have a slide that I'm going to go over that too. Plant protein, even in high quantities, as a powder, like pea protein or something, plant protein do not provide the satiety that animal protein does. And as I mentioned at the very beginning, satiety is king. So you should be able to eat X X grams of protein in the morning with X grams of fat, the quality of that should make you last 10, 18 hours before you're hungry again, depending on various factors, your stress level, your activity level, um, how deep are you in ketosis, and you know, that kind of stuff. Plant protein doesn't cut it. Okay, now there's three good plant oils, avocado oil, these are fruit oils, avocado oil, olive oil, and coconut oil. All right, liver, no food has greater amounts of nutrients. So here we have these minerals, phosphorus, iron, zinc, and copper, and you have this enormous amount of those minerals in liver even compared to red meat, like that. And here we have vitamin B2, that's a water, the B vitamins are water-soluble. Um, 
huge amounts like this compared to the other foods. Vitamin C, zero in red meat. But look at that, liver's got 27 milligrams compared to the apple and carrot. So one thing that's interesting and cool about eating carnivore is that you don't, you don't deplete your body of nutrients. So when the USDA came out with their RDAs, the recommended daily allowances, or DV, daily value, they based those numbers on the standard American diet. High carb, bread, junk food, low fat, bad fats. So when you're eating crappy food, you need a ton of nutrients because your body gets depleted of all those nutrients. So if you just eat, if, if you're focusing on meat, you're maintaining those nutrients. You need, you need way less. All right, and I talked about this in a previous video, but I use Chronometer, which is an app on the phone, and I, maybe I should pull it up right now. Let me see if I can pull it up. <coughs> back to <clears throat> last week. There it is. This is the day that I had. There's 2,006 calories, 198 grams of protein, 7.6 carbs, 128 grams of fat. You look at all of these green, the yellow means I didn't meet my RDA. So here we have vitamins, but I got all these, I got these as B vitamins. Minerals, I got enough protein. I didn't even get all these fats. Okay. But I'm not concerned about this because I'm conserving the nutrients that I have. So there was a vegan on social media that said that she did this and all of her bars were green because she's eating plants and plants and plants, but yet she felt like she was dying. So she switched over to carnivore. All these became yellow instead of green. And now she's got all her strength back and she's not dying anymore and she feels fantastic. Okay, got that? Super important. Okay, I'm gonna go back to this. Um, so there are some minerals that you don't find in meat, like, like uh, magnesium, uh, calcium. No, you can. There's going to be other minerals in meat too. Yeah, this is just a short list. Right. And um, there's a, for a while, I haven't really seen this lately in social media, but a few years ago there was a concern that eating meat causes osteoporosis because if you consume meat, you can measure calcium coming out in the urine over the next day or two, or even longer. I think it may be even for weeks. But the truth is, Meat has a lot of this phosphorus. So phosphorus, when you consume it, pushes calcium out of the body. When you take in calcium, that pushes phosphorus out of the body. They're both important, but there's gotta be some balance there. Okay, and what's the biggest problem when people get older, they get calcified. Too much calcium in their arteries, in their joints, they get stiff. So you need more phosphorus to push out all the unwanted calcium that could be deposited anywhere from head to toe. Bone spurs, arthritis, okay? So phosphorus is super important for balance. Okay, uh, let's talk a little bit about liver. Um, we've been told that if you eat too much liver, like polar bear liver, you're gonna die of vitamin A toxicity. That's not a true statement. So there's fake vitamin A, which is retinol, and then there's whole food vitamin A, which is a complex of, of, uh, of chemicals, not just retinol, but other things too. Okay, so there are people that have died from eating a little bit of fish liver. Well, is it because of vitamin A toxicity? No, it's probably an infection. Same thing with the polar bear liver. That liver that people died from was probably infected. But there's people, tribes, for eons, eating polar bear liver and not dying. Right, so this whole thing about polar bear liver or liver causing uh, toxicity from too much vitamin A, that's false. That's a false um, statement. Okay, ask me some questions. <laughs> so where do you buy liver? At the store. Buy liver at the store. Not really liver. You gotta look for it, it's there. There's tongue, even Meyer has it. Tongue and tripe and liver veal liver or chicken livers, 
You can buy a big bucket of giblets, chicken parts, hearts, <laughs> livers, you know, and whatever other inside the body, inside the chicken. So um, I belong to a meat CSA in Manchester. And if you're interested, I can hook you up with her. She does a, a drop off once a month. As a matter of fact, right here in our back parking lot. And so once a month you get a full share or a half share of organically raised bacon and steaks and uh, ground meat. It's great. If you're into liver. Huh? And liver? And liver. Yeah. Yep. Not not every month, but okay. Other questions? So how do you, you eat liver? Like how often do you eat it or? Um, I was eating liver like <clears throat> twice a month for a while, and I haven't had it now for probably at least six months. Um, I still have a bunch in my freezer, but I'm, my appetite, I'm, I've, I've been focusing more on just like red meat. Yeah. And I'm a fan of liver. I like cooking it too. High heat, a few minutes on one side, a few minutes on the other. I enjoy the whole process. And hot, lots of hot sauce. And then I think I think you said Sunday when you went out to eat, you had steak and some greens. So yes, how do you <coughs> how much greens do you eat, or when, or why? I ate the greens because because they came with the meal. Okay. But but I it also came with mashed potatoes. It said no mashed potatoes, no bread, and extra butter. And she came out with this little pat of butter, <laughs> and she put it down to walk away. I was like, no, 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 like that. I said, no, I said, like a bowl like this. So she brings this bowl, and it had three little pets of butter in it. I was like, okay, whatever. Can cancer patients go carnivore? Yeah, cancer patients can go carnivore. And make sure you go into ketosis, and you're measuring it. And um, look up a Junus van der Planets. His first name is A-A-J-O-N-U-S, I believe, and he was deathly ill, and he went full carnivore. He's got a fantastic story. I think it's from the early 90s or late 80s, and he's got other stories about people on their deathbed, and he, they eat raw eggs, like three dozen raw eggs in two days, and now they're up and out of bed. And this is, I did a video about this too, so Dr. Weston Price was famous for this. He would bring cod liver oil, and June butter, and feed that to people on their deathbed, and it would bring them back to life. So you, this is what old timey doctors would do: is bring fat around to the people who are sick, and get them into ketosis, basically, and feed them all the essential fats, like and, and and all these other vitamins that come from these types of foods, the oil, the the animal fats and protein. Yeah. Um, the next question says, is that beef liver? I think they're referring to what's on the screen. I'm not sure. Was there another question there? Okay, yeah. What, what about toxins in liver? Do you eat toxins? That's a good question. What about toxins in liver? The to liver is not a, a storage warehouse for toxins. It's a processing plant, just like every other cell in your body. So it's not that big of a concern. Of course, you want to go for organic. Organic is always better than commercial. But the difference is kind of slight. Mm -hmm. So I, I have the organic meat drop-off once a month, but I also go to restaurants that eat their burgers and steaks and stuff. I know it's not organic and I'm not too concerned about it. Yeah. Another question? So in the immunity that the cow was raising, it didn't have biotic hormones, whatever. Yeah. So, so when cows are raised for meat, they're, they eat grass for most of their life, and they, be, they may be finished with grains for maybe three months or six months to fatten them up. And when you look at our ancestors, they would kill an animal, and they would eat the meat, which was lean. And then they would eat fatty organs, like brain, bone marrow. So they had the protein and they had the fat separately. Um, but if a cow is fattened with grains, the protein and the fat it just come together in one cut. So it's not bad. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah, that part, yes, but uh, the cows raised with antibiotics. Oh, yeah. I have a graphic on my Facebook page about the antibiotics and the hormones used 
in the production of beef. Um, well, you don't, I don't know if I can pull that up. I'll just talk about it. So if, so the amount of estrogen that you get from eating commercial beef is equal to like, you would have to eat like 10 cows a year to equal a toxic level or something. Like you have to eat enormous amounts of cows in a short period of time for any sort of toxicity to be a problem. Okay. A couple more questions. Yeah. Um, can the meat be prepared with spices and herbs? Yeah, for sure. And yeah, make the meat taste like the way you want it to taste and cook it the right amount. Yeah. So what? Quite, real quick question. Raise your hand if you like medium rare. I think that's more popular, medium rare. Who likes it like burnt? Like well done? Nobody? Who likes it rare, blue on the inside? Yeah? Okay, cool. That's it. I just wanted to find that's out. That's not my liver. Uh, not your liver? Not really, yeah. no. <laughs> I have horrible childhood memories of liver. I'm not able to get past really good okay. liver. Well, that's what, and then, so that's why you have all these liver pills, you know. Okay, next question. Um, what proportion should the quantities be in? Proportion, quantities of what? Meat. Compared to? Just says the quantities should be in what proportion? Oh, like maybe portion size in a meal? Yeah. Um, let me answer this question this way. So don't let um, any government agency dictate how much meat that you're eating. Let your appetite dictate that. Okay, so I, have, I had a patient drive in from Virginia. Um, she left um, today. She was in yesterday and today. And uh, she's staying at Weber's. They went to Knight's Steakhouse. She's probably 115 pounds. She had a 24 ounce steak. <laughs> right? Like, okay. Right? Don't like eat half a steak and push away because you're trying to be polite <laughs> or ladylike or whatever. Eat it. Okay, next. <laughs> What about processed food like sa sausages, hot dogs, like sodium nitrate maybe is maybe the biggest concern? Um, <clears throat> that's a very good question. So I'm going to answer this in two ways. So sodium nitrate has been linked with stomach cancer. Does it mean it causes it? No. So Sally Fallon from the Weston A. Price Foundation said to me once that um, if you were to take out all the preservatives except for sodium nitrate, and maybe a few others, we'll all be fine. It's an accumulation of a lot of different preservatives that you'll find in the, you know, the processed food. That's the worst stuff from the food manufacturer. So if your dad's really clean and you have sodium nitrate in your, in your hot dog and sausage, okay. Okay, but you can still find no nitrate sausage and bacon at Meyer even. Now the other thing is, this link between sodium nitrate and Cancer has not been tested, right? It's an epidemiological observation. So maybe there might not be any link whatsoever. Okay. Is there another question? Okay, question from the audience. There's no sausage without this. There, there is. I just bought some. There's sausage at Meyer that has no sodium nitrate or nitrite. You know, people used to salt their, their meat to preserve it. And um, it was not as effective as sodium nitrate. So sodium nitrate saves a lot of people's lives, you know, like reducing food poisoning. And you know, I just have to say that most food poisoning comes from plants. The last time I got violently ill from food poisoning, probably two years ago, was organic purple carrots. Right? I don't tell people to not eat organic purple carrots. Right? So people shouldn't be saying, don't eat meat because it's got E. coli on it. That's not an argument. Right? But I'm just saying again, most food poisoning comes from plants. Okay. Pesticides. Huh? Because of pesticides? Well, I'm talking bacteria like food poisoning, like E. coli, oh. salmonella. Okay. Um, why do they say that eating meat is bad for cancer? It's a good question. That answer takes about five minutes, and I'm going to answer it. 
But back to you, what you said about pesticides, yeah. The pesticides settling on the leaves and getting soaked into the plant, the roundup. So plants, it's not just, it's more than just food poisoning, it's actually, you're getting toxified from conventional agriculture. Okay, so why, why is it said that meat is bad for cancer? Um, I can tell you this, a year ago I had a woman, she had breast cancer, I had her eat more fat, more protein, more cheese, more meat, and it took six weeks and her breast cancer went away. We did the two to one ratio of fat versus protein plus carbs that I drew up here. She did some fasting, and so eating meat, in that case, re helped reverse her cancer. It's all about knowing the numbers and the ratios and the macronutrients. So why is it said that meat causes more cancer? Here's why. And that's a very good question. And I said this before, and I've been meaning to say it again, it should be repeated at least a few times every year. So you have a group of people that are overweight, they smoke too much, they drink too much, they don't wear their seatbelt, they don't see their medical doctor, they don't exercise, and they eat meat. You got these people, they don't smoke, they don't drink, they exercise, they see their doctor, they don't eat meat, they wear their seatbelt, they eat beans. Okay, these people are sicker. <laughs> they get more cancer, more heart disease, more diabetes. So, is it the meat? No, you can't tell that. There's too many factors. And just because, and there's some studies that try to control the factors. But there's so many factors, you, it's impossible. There's emotions. You're going to control somebody's emotions for three years in a controlled trial? There's uh, genetics, you know. People with red hair act differently than people with blue hair when it comes to foods and stresses, etc., etc. Can I say blue hair? Blonde hair, blue eyes. Um, so that's why people say that meat is bad. So people that don't like meat, they want you to eat all plants, they'll pick the one factor that they have an agenda against, and they'll say meat is bad. And this goes back to Ansel Keys in the 1950s. He was a, a researcher in nutrition. And it goes back earlier, even to the 1800s, the Seventh-day Adventist Church. There was a, um, a prophetess, a woman that would get visions. And they're trying to sell, they're trying to salvage people spiritually. And she had a vision that meat causes um, lewd behavior. So no more meat. So to this day, the Seventh-day Adventists are still part of the control of the dietetics associations around the Western world. Okay, so there's a religious component to no meat and low fat. All right, it's unfounded. You can't just have a vision and say, all right, nobody should be eating meat anymore. All right, there, there, I think that answered that question pretty good. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Is there another question? Um, should dairy be avoided if you have cancer? No, you got to know your ratios. Now, if you're allergic to dairy, if you eat dairy and get a bunch of mucus, then you should avoid it. All right, otherwise, so that's a quality question if you get mucus. But in the quantity question would be know your ratios. Make sure you're eating the right ratios. <clears throat> yeah. So some doctors say they don't eat meat if you have a high cholesterol. Right. That's the same thing. It's the epidemiological observational studies. So to continue that answer, you get a hypothesis from the observational study. Meat is bad. That's my guess. You can't make any clinical decisions, you can't recommend any lifestyle choices on epidemiology. That is so um, unethical and immoral. And there's doctors doing it left and right. I, I'm telling you, it's gotta be 98% of the doctors, nutritionists, dietitians. They're, and 97% of them are just, Ill, they just don't know, they're just ignorant. The other three that do know, 3% that do know, they're immoral. Okay, so you take the hypothesis and then you send it to other researchers who are smarter and have more money and have more time and more resources and they do a clinical trial. So they take two groups of people and they make a change. They do something to one of those groups and they say to this group, okay, they take a ran two, random two random groups of people and they tell one group, Reduce your meat intake by 20%. And then they follow them along for a few years. And the hypothesis would be that the reduction of heart disease, diabetes, and cancer would be 20% in that group. And they've done this. 
and it's called the Women's Health Initiative. And there was no drop in cancer, heart disease, or diabetes. That one study negates 110 years of epidemiological studies, it, otherwise known as observational studies. All it takes is one experiment to delete all those observational studies, right? Thanks, it feels so good to say that. <laughs> it makes it so easy. All right, next question. Uh, don't we have to eat vegetables to have all the needed nutrients? No, <laughs> no you don't. Um, should I say more about that? Mm -hmm. Well, like I said earlier, when you're eating lower carb, you're maintaining the nutrients that you have. And also, too, you get a ton of nutrients from meat. Yeah. And I don't know what else to say about that. So, <clears throat> the one thing I thought of that... Uh, I, I know how you answer. Go ahead. That you need uh, all the amino acids to mm -hmm. properly have your body function. Yeah. And they aren't all available. I, not that I know a lot of, you know, meat strictly. And you had mentioned seed oils being a problem where they are in some of the seed oils. Um, anything about, you know, having a, a proper synergistic mix of amino acids. Right, I mean, you get you certainly get all the amino acids from protein. Every, every one of them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, I had a different, I had a, a bigger answer for that. Ask me that question again. Don't we have to eat vegetables? Uh, to have all the nutrients. Oh yeah, okay, good question. So here's a here's a better answer. When you look at studies, um, there's one particular statistic that matters most compared to all the other statistics, and that's all cause mortality. So how do people die when they eat this way, and how do people die when they eat this way? Alright, regardless of nutrient intake, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, do you live longer? with one diet versus the other. So let me just kind of like wrap this up by saying there's a term called omnivore. People who are omnivores eat meat and plants and junk food and pop and chips and white bread. That's an omnivore. So if you eliminate the junk food, now you just have plants and animals. That's called a nutrivore, which is a newer term. Okay, a nutrivore. And if you take that group and you eliminate the animal uh, products that's vegan okay so the studies show that nutrivores and vegans live the same length of time vegans do not live longer than nutrivores it's equal okay there's a guy named Chris Kresser he's got a blog on his website chriscresser.com Chris Kresser with a K Kresser and so the problem is always the junk food Right? And if you go back to the 1800s, when did the junk food industry start? The first candy bar was 1848, Tootsie Rolls were 1890s, you know, ginger ale, Dr. Pepper, Pepsi, Coke, all that stuff, all the junk food, 1870s, 1880s, 1890s. And when did heart disease start? It was first recorded in uh, a medical journal in 1911. I have the article in my office. And then the, the term myocardial infarction was 1916. So you have junk food in 1880, 30 years later you have heart attacks, right? It's from the junk food, it's not the meat. Because the meat's been around before 1860. It's been around since the very, 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 very beginning. Okay, so there's that. I think I answered that question pretty good. So, you know, if you're just eating meat, if you're eating more meat than vegetables like this, you still live as long as somebody eating, eating a vegan diet. There's another question. There's two. Yeah, go for it. Um, what is dirty keto? <laughs> I just think it means sloppy keto where somebody's not looking at chronometer to track their numbers and testing their blood and they're eating like spoonfuls of oil and they're keeping their carbs low but they're not actually counting their carbs. That's dirty keto. And they may get results. They may lose 15 pounds over the course of a few months. So they'll say, yeah, I've been eating dirty keto. And their breath stinks sometimes, so they know they're in ketosis because of their breath. Um, is keto bread okay on the keto diet? Is keto bread okay? What's it made out of? That'd be like fathead bread? I don't know, it depends on the ingredients. I guess I need more information to answer that question. 
I'm a fan of keto stuff. Yeah. Sometimes the keto products are not good. Sometimes the keto products are not good. I said keto, keto, I just think it should be something good. Huh? Yeah, that's a true statement. And you know, there's um, that term exogenous ketones, which are, it's beta hydroxybutyrate, the powder form. And there's been, you know, you can, on Google you can search interest, like how many people search per day per year on a topic. The exogenous ketones search, um, I'll do it this way, searches went up like this at a very high rate up until about three years ago. And now it's dropping, which is a good thing. We don't want to be taking in exogenous ketones. We want our bodies to make the ketones because of our diet. Now, if you're an athlete or you're a Navy scuba diver, and you're trying to prevent the bends because you just dove 300 feet or something, you know, then ketones would play a role in there. But for the general population, I'm not, not a fan of exogenous ketones. Yeah. Exogenous is not going to heal the body. True, you want your body to make it. <laughs> so your body makes the ketones, which is our, their water-soluble chemical, makes that from fat cells. Then your body uses that. Now you can burn fat without making ketones. You can lose weight that way too, but the ketones have such greater therapeutic effects like killing cancer cells and et cetera. Yeah, is there a question? Um, no, for the keto diet, it just says like using almond flour, co coconut flour. Yeah, I mean, that's a, 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 it's a general, it's a general yes. I don't really know the ratios of the grams <coughs> or, you know, so I, I'm just gonna say okay with reservations. Okay. Questions here? No? All right, cool. So it's been an hour. Thanks for listening to me. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome.